All right, I'm going to do a couple of examples of simple form models, the ones that will follow the same technique or pattern that I showed you in the notes for this particular part. Start off with the Bohr model for carbon. Again, in the periodic table box, there will be two numbers. There will be a number that's a whole one, six in this case, and there will be a number with a decimal point and values after it. That is going to be the atomic mass. So our atomic number for carbon is six. The atomic mass is 12 rounded from 12.001. Again, when we use this mass, what we're going to do is we're going to round it to a whole number. The 2 is followed by a 0, so we leave it alone. And just round that off to 12. Now we need to figure out our particles, our pieces for the puzzle. The atomic number tells us the number of protons. And again, the abbreviation for proton is P+. Plus. We have 6 of those. To find the number of neutrons, what we have to do is take the mass minus the atomic number. So what we're going to do is 12 minus 6. There are six of those. And then for the number of electrons, the abbreviation for electron is E minus. It's going to be the same as the number of protons, six of those. So six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Now there's one more piece of the puzzle that we need, and you're not going to see it on the board here because I don't have the entire periodic table up on the board, and that is the period number for carbon. And again, the period numbers are the numbers that go down the left-hand side of the periodic table. What you do is you find carbon on your table, and you go all the way over the left side to see what number's there, and what you'll find over there is a 2. Carbon is in period 2. And what that means is it has two energy levels. So six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. So six electrons are divided between two energy levels. That's all the information we need to draw a carbon four model. We start off with the nucleus. And again, just draw a circle. Tell me how many protons and neutrons you have. You don't have to draw them in. You just have to write P plus equals and N zero equals, so we know how many they're supposed to be there. As I said, if we draw them all in there, it ends up being a big mess of dots, and it's hard to tell what's what. So six protons, six neutrons in the nucleus of a carbon atom. Next thing we're going to do is draw in our energy levels. And carbon has two. So we've got two rings around the carbon atom. We need to put our six electrons into those two levels. Now you have to remember, each level has a limit. Level number one has a limit of two electrons. Level number two has a limit of eight. So we put our first two electrons in energy level number one. We have four more to go. And those four electrons can be put into energy level number two. Kind of spread them out. At this point, we want to recognize that electrons have negative charges, and negative charges repel each other, so they naturally try to stay as far away from each other as possible, so spread them out in those energy levels for now. The aluminum. Again, there's two numbers in the box. You've got this whole number, and you've got this one with a decimal point and the decimal values. Again, the whole number is atomic number. The atomic number of aluminum is 13. The one with the decimal values, that's the atomic mass. And again, we want to round it. The 6 is followed by a 9, so round that up to a 7. 27 is the atomic mass. The number of protons, well, that's the atomic number, 13. The number of neutrons is the mass minus the atomic number, or 14. As we saw over here, our protons and neutrons are equal, but they don't have to be. It's whatever the mass minus the atomic number is. And the electrons, again, will be the same as the protons. These are all neutral atoms at this point. So 
So there are 13 electrons in this atom. Again, we need to know the period number, and I don't have the whole periodic table up here, so you just have to look at your periodic table and figure this out for yourself. Get your finger on aluminum, and then go all the way over to the left of that row, all the way over to the sodium, Na, and look at the number left next to it. That's a three. So aluminum belongs to period three. That means it has three energy levels. And we're going to have to divide these 13 electrons into three energy levels when we draw our model. Start with the nucleus. And again, all you got to tell me is how many protons and neutrons you have. Protons are 13, neutrons are 14. Then draw in your three energy levels as three rings around your nucleus. Start filling them up, again, remembering the limits. Level number one can hold two. Two down, 11 to go. The next level can hold eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have two and eight, we have 10 in all. We have three more to go. We put those three in the last energy level. And again, we want to recognize that the electrons repel each other. That they don't like to be near each other, so we spread them out, at least at this point. We don't put them too close together. 